Um, so yeah, I was doing uh, YOM. Well, I actually started in December. Me and my dad did a four week, week uh, kind of vacation together, which was nice spending time with him. And then he dropped me off at YOM, which is Youth with a Mission. You guys, a lot of you know what that's all about. Uh, a lot of people have been doing it. Uh, it's a six month course called DTS, uh, Discipleship Training School. Uh, it's a three month lecture phase. So for three months, we're in South Africa, we're on base, we're um, going through classes and lecture phase, and then uh, two, two and a half months, we're on outreach. So I'm just going to talk a bit about lecture phase. Um, yeah, every day we would have three hours of teaching. So lecture phase, we'd be in class. Uh, we had a different topic every week. We had, uh, there was grace, cost of discipleship, hearing God's voice, uh, Holy Spirit, relationships, missions, kingdom of God, and spiritual warfare, and that's just a few of them. Uh, we had a different topic every week with different speakers coming in to speak to us. Um, so what we did on base was in the mornings we would have something different like worship, uh, devotion, prayer, or intercession in the mornings. Uh, afternoons, well then we had class in the morning for three hours. Uh, afternoons we would either have work duties on base or we would have local ministries which we would go out into the townships and the poor areas and uh, evangelize around there. And uh, We did a lot of kids ministries as well. And then in the evenings, we had either small group um, outreach prep or we would have time off in the evenings to do what we needed to do. Um, on lecture phase, so that's what we did on lecture phase. That was kind of the, the outline and the schedule. But what God really did in me, just a few few small points, um, he really showed me like the joy that there is in him, that we can have fun and do fun things and enjoy our time w while we're like spending time with him and not just in worldly things all the time, and which is awesome, especially in YWAM. They have such a a nice um, like culture. A nice, uh, there's so many people there, young people that are doing the same thing as you, which is which was awesome. And and just God showed me like coming into relationship with him instead of him being a distant person where we come to or we go to lectures for me, like going to lectures and learning about him was. Uh, always something that God was to me, but coming in a relationship with Him and He, and just realizing that He really wants our relationship with us was a huge thing for me. Um, and then my favorite week was Grace. Um, we had a week on Grace, and He, this was my favorite week by far. Um, I never really looked at Grace. I never actually took time to look at Grace, and I never realized it's something that can change the way we um, we out we look on life and. And it can actually change the way we live. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to talk a bit about grace. Uh, that grace is a free gift from God and that we, can, we can't earn grace. Like grace is something that a lot of us can't wrap our minds around because it's, it doesn't make sense to us. Um, and the speaker that week talked about uh, back when there were slaves. Um, and there were slaves and slaves could be bought out of slavery by their master. And this would mean um, that they would they would be bought out and they would never have to work again. They would get all the benefits that uh, the slaves would. They would um, get living and they would get food. And their whole family would be bought out of slavery. And um, yeah, so this family would never, they would never have to go back into slavery. And they would be, they would basically be, become as part of the family that they were, that where they were slaves with and they would become treated as sons and daughters. And uh, one thing that <clears throat> surprised me was he was talking about how a lot of these slaves would, work anyways, they would, because they were so like thankful that they were bought out of slavery, that they would work anyways. And um, yeah, he just talked about how this is our, this is kind of our walk with God, like God, when he uh, died on the cross, he bought us out of slavery and he redeemed us, and that we, we are sons and daughters. And um, the biggest thing for me was when the slaves were bought out of slavery, they would go back and work, but their mindset changed. They would when they were slaves, this was something they had to do, and a lot of them hated it. But once they were as sons and daughters, they looked at it as something that they wanted to do because they were they felt blessed. And um, yeah, so this was this is can go to our like spiritual walk when we there's things like going to church and reading our Bible, which are things that we can we can become slaves to Christianity, and these can be things that we uh, we view as things that we have to do and you view these things as uh, we add these to grace to, uh, in order to receive grace. We add these things. and um, But that's not how it should be when we're 
sons and daughters, just like the slaves, we should look at these things as we have to do these, or we, we want to do these. And just the mindset change was, was a huge thing for me because like reading my Bible was a hard time and just all these things were really hard for me. And um, when I got that mindset change and these are things that I want to do and I want to get closer to God, it actually, it was amazing. Just even reading my Bible, it just seemed different and it seemed more alive and it just, it, was, it wasn't a chore, but it was uh, something I really wanted to do. So, yeah, that was uh, the week that impacted me the most um, during lecture phase. Uh, then I'll move to outreach. Um, when we were choosing outreach, we had a whole bunch of, there were options that we had, and we um, each prayed about them. And uh, we would just see where God um, felt like he was leading us. And so I had, we had two options, and or we had, we would each put down two options, and I ended up getting my second option, and uh, I didn't really feel comfortable with my second option. Like I, I felt like God was, God had wanted me to go to the first place, and I wasn't sure. And for a while, I felt really uneasy about it, and uh, I wasn't sure that that's actually where God wanted me to go was the second option. But uh, one day, I was walking just up the stairs on my base and found a coin on the ground, and I picked it up, and it said Republic of Kenya on it, and. That's where my second option was, and like then I just kind of, I don't know why I found a Kenyan coin in South Africa, but uh, it, just, it was kind of a sign for me, and God just, after that, God gave me peace with, with the second option, um, and he just really showed me that this is where I was supposed to go, and he really gave me a heart for the place. Um, so I, was in, I went to Kenya and uh, the Comoros Islands. Um, I'll just talk about Kenya for a bit. We were, we were in Kenya um, for four weeks, and... Our outreach was a little different than other people's outreaches, um, just because we were going into, we were actually only in two locations our entire outreach. We um, we wanted to go into these places and kind of learn their culture and get to know them, and it was more building relationships than going out into the cities and evangelizing. So we were in a super rural village in Kenya. Uh, there's lots of AIDS there, which which um, causes lots of there's lots of widows and orphans, which we worked with a lot of widows and orphans um, all all day. Um, we also did a lot of house visits. Um, we would just go and visit people and build relationships and go back and see them. And uh, we worked in a lot of fields with them. Um, and then the last week in Kenya, we did uh, a VBS, which is a vacation Bible school for little kids. And this was by far my hardest week in Kenya, and probably the whole outreach because. There, we did three different classes. One was zero to four, and then another middle grade and the oldest grade. And so we, I was in the young kids, which was uh, four years and under. And there was me and two other people from my team, and then two locals. And uh, this class was the biggest. We had 85 kids in a small room uh, with five of us. Two of them could speak their language. Us three could not speak their language. And these kids are four and under. And so the week was like hectic. It was. These kids would cry half the time. They sat on the ground and just pee their pants. Uh, then once the pee came out, they'd splash it around. Um, and then we had to try and teach these kids something from the Bible that was going to impact their lives, which was hard. And I don't think uh, the teaching that we did really impacted them. But the, just the love that we showed them and the time we spent with them is what did it because our the love is everlasting that we have. Um, so, yeah, that was... Kenya, definitely the hardest. Uh, last week was the hardest week, but uh, God showed me patience, and yeah. So then we went over to Comoros, where we were for five weeks. We were sleeping on the beach in tents for five weeks. Um, and Comoros is there. There's four little islands. It's close to Madagascar. Um, there's one million people on the four islands, um, so it seems like a lot, but it's pretty scarce the place. Um, I didn't even know about Comoros before I before I went there. Um, in Comoros it's 99% Muslim people, so the whole, basically everyone is Muslim. Uh, where we were, we we only met two believers in the area that we were, which was the whole time we met two believers. Um, and it's also close to the gospel, which means we can't openly preach the gospel, so we were going there as tourists. And so yeah, that was also hard and um, yeah, Comoros is just, it's, it's a really like hopeless, it almost seems like a hopeless place because they're the third, third poorest country in the, in the world and um, 
these people have no jobs. They just, like, as far as poverty goes, they have food, but they, they have no jobs to buy anything. They, like, the men, 90% of the men will sit there all day and they'll play dominoes in the evening, but that's it. And you ask them what they did and they said, yeah, we didn't, like, there's nothing to do here. We just relaxed all day. And so they, yeah, it's, it's really sad to see, see these people doing nothing all day, literally. Um, and going there, we knew it was going to be hard for us because it's a Muslim country and like the spiritual heaviness we knew was going to be hard, but we didn't know how hard it was going to be. We, uh, got into the airport and right away you could just feel like the spiritual heaviness there. Um, we didn't end up getting through security for a few hours because our host didn't show up and there had been a coup attempt to overthrow the government the week before. So our leaders were getting questioned and, uh, the workers at the airport are, they all take turns praying there. So it was a real shock going there and just seeing, um, just, just the whole Muslim culture. I'd never been open to the Muslim culture and, uh, I was really scared going there. I didn't know how we were going to minister to, um, Muslims. I just thought that they were, uh, like so set in their ways. And so I, I just didn't know anything about Muslims and ended up going there. And once you get to know the Muslim, like get to know them and their culture and their, just, they're so, uh, like welcoming, they're so nice, and they're so open, like they're, they're open about everything in their lives, and, um, so yeah, it was, once we got to know them, we built relationships with them also there, and, um, we taught in two different schools eight times a week, so that took up a lot of the time. We were teaching, uh, English, which was, it was a lot of fun teaching them English, um, and just something that they can hold on to, and at the beginning they were speaking us, to us in their language, but by the end they were, saying, hello, how are you? And we would teach the kids, and the kids would go home, and they would teach their parents. And um, so we'd go around, and the parents would be speaking to us in English, which was pretty cool. Um, yeah, so we, yeah, in Comoros, we we did a lot of relationship building and just making friends, and then through that, that's how we could minister. Um, so, yeah, I made a lot of close friends up there, and some days my ministry would look like going to hang out with them all day and go fishing with them, because that's the one thing that they that they can do there is fish. So the one day I went fishing with a guy all day and just getting to speak to them was, and yeah, they were just open about everything. Like they would tell me all their, basically all their problems. Like it was no big deal. They were just open with everyone. And yeah, it was really good. Um, sorry. Um, yeah, the struggles in Comoros were definitely like not being able to preach the gospel or not being able to just openly speak to people we have to be careful who we spoke to. Um, and the spiritual heaviness was definitely, like, I'd never really been, like, open to the spiritual realm that much. And once we were there, it was just, the heaviness was crazy. And the, just the way we were affected, like, we would get tired all the time, um, which was uh, really good, or not really good. Uh, one one day we had, in the evening, we had a drunk guy come to our house, and he was, <clears throat> he thought we were doctors, so he was asking for, medicine for his back. He had hurt his back. And uh, we said, no, we can't. We don't have medicine, but we can pray for you. And he's like, okay. Like, he was really drunk, and he was also a Muslim. And so we prayed for his back, and it was healed completely. His back, his lower back was completely healed. And he kind of, like, looked at us and said, like, what you guys do? And we're like, well, we prayed for you, and Jesus healed you. And he's like, oh, you are Jesus. And, <laughs> and we, like, tried to explain to him in his state... Yeah, it must have been my hair. So we we tried to explain to him in his state that Jesus had healed him, and finally he said, okay, okay, yeah, Jesus healed me. He's like, I'll come back tomorrow for more Jesus. Come back tomorrow. Um, while we were there, I the one day I got a picture of like a flashlight, and it was kind of while the sun was going down. Um, and like the flat, like you, everyone knows flashlights during the day, they don't make a big difference or... Um, the sun was going down, but the, the flashlight still wasn't dark enough for it to make a difference. And then when it was pitch black, this flash, this small little flashlight could shine super bright. And that's, God kind of showed me that that's what we were doing in Comoros. We were going to a super dark place and we were, that flashlight and we, when we go into a darker place and we were able to shine even brighter in that dark area. So yeah, it was just, it was like, it was kind of at a hard time when he showed me that too. Like we had a lot of, Sometimes it didn't feel like we were doing much there because we, we couldn't do 
much as what we think as in preaching, but yeah, just the love that we were showing these people was like was the light there, and we were we were being Jesus' hands and feet, and um, yeah, we would go for prayer walks around there, and just the uh, yeah, just the light, the lighter mood. I was in the village after we would go walk in and pray there, and just yeah, it was amazing seeing seeing that. Um, and so yeah, then that was Comoros, um, and then we went back to South Africa for a week of debrief, but. Um, over the outreach, um, I think one of the biggest things I learned was um, was quiet times with uh, the Lord. And during lecture phase, I um, I kind of thought it was my input being the lectures, and I wouldn't spend much time with God, and I wouldn't spend much time reading the Bible. But when I had free time and I didn't know what to do with it, I would start to read my Bible. And um, yeah, God just really gave me, he started giving me, like just revelation when I was reading the Bible and I started to learn things just from reading my own Bible and it was something that I'd never really never really happened to me before that I could learn something from just reading myself. It was always something like coming to church or going to a seminar where I could learn something that would impact me. But um, every morning spending time with the Lord and um, reading my Bible was yeah something that was like empowering. And without without that, I I wouldn't have been able to. Like I wouldn't have been able to do my fullest on outreach. It was, it was, yeah, a time where I could just spend time with the Lord, and it was, yeah, it's something that had never really happened in my life is spending time with the Lord being so impactful, and so yeah, that's another big thing. Um, so yeah, that's my, that's basically my trip in a nutshell. Um, um, yeah, and I was just overall, overall on my trip. When I actually just the other day I was talking to my dad and kind of thinking like what how have I changed when I came back or like what's how how am I different and I kind of realized that coming back here everything's the same as when we left it which is really hard because um, we've done a lot but we come back here and it's like nothing's really changed here which we expect and I just kind of realized that like my world has changed but the world hasn't changed and something that I guess I'm like have to do now is God's just showing me how I can come back into the same world and still be a light that's uh, shining around, which is yeah something that's going on now. But yeah, I just wanted to leave you guys with one last challenge, and that's back to the grace thing. And that's are we like are you guys living as um, slaves or um, yeah like are you doing these things out of the out of the have tos and just to encourage you guys to just ask God to change your mindset and change the way you look at it and change the sons and daughters and to look at it as um, just the want to. Because, like, for me, that was the biggest thing is just these things that you want to do and then they become fun and they become they become joyful. So, yeah, that's the one last thing that I want to challenge you guys with. And that's my trip in a nutshell. And if you guys have more questions, you guys can come to me after. But other than that, I'm going to close in prayer. Yeah, God, I thank you for this opportunity that I have to share, Jesus. And I just pray that these words that that I said, Lord, and these words that you that you said through me, Jesus, that um, they would really impact these, pe- these people, Lord, and that each and every one of these people here can take something out of this, Lord. And yeah, I just thank you for all the all the opportunities you gave me, Lord, and and how, how much you've blessed me on my trip, Jesus. And I, yeah, I just pray for this next week ahead that each and every one of us can um, change from the mindset of having to do things and going to the things of that we want to do these things and we want to become closer to you, Lord. And I thank you for this, and I just pray this in your name. Amen.